It's so much fun when you can get more than one of these things on the road. Yeah. You can hear that humming from the, yeah. from the differential. It's kind of an interesting hummer chord. Sort of Jay Leno's garage. Next to me here, you see a couple of classic Hummers from the 90s. You know, we are big fans of Detroit. Detroit has been going through a wonderful resurgence lately. A lot of small businesses opening up, some automotive, some electronic, but it, it's really coming back. And we've done a couple of stories on Detroit. And this is one of those Detroit stories. These are three guys that formed a company called Millspec. They're all in their 20s. And what they do is they take classic Hummers from the 90s and up and redo them, go through them completely, modern engines, modern technology, switch them all over to diesel. Uh, let's meet the Ian, Adam, and Chris. Come on in, guys. Are you? Thanks Good for having us you. on the show. Good, Good to see you guys. Nice. I love what you're Good doing. You. I think Thank it's you. really cool. It's, it's hard to think of the word recycling and Hummers in, the same, uh, <laughs> yeah. in yeah. the same breath. But what you do is you take these old vehicles and totally redo them. Get rid of the stock engine, switch to what? What mode did you put in? So we put a 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel um, that you would traditionally find in like a modern day GM heavy duty truck. Right, so these would meet current smog emissions. Correct, yes. Even though they're vehicles from the 90s. So yeah, that's, correct, so that's exactly. Good. Yeah. Now did you start with civilian model Hummers? Did you start with military? How, how does that work? So we started out on the prototyping with Humvee trucks, which is more or less the same thing as the civilian H1. Right. Um, just doesn't have a VIN number and it, it kind of lacked all the interior frills that we got it anyway. Ian's actually designed the truck and he can speak you know, more volumes as to what we've done exactly in the interior space. Yeah, so basically we use a civilian truck. Um, we got the truck down to the body and the frame rails and everything else is new content from there. So the interior doesn't share anything with the original H1. You know, a lot of the suspension geometry has been revised, the wheels, tires, uh, the powertrain has all been designed and, and developed in-house. So this is a business. Do you guys have a business background? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I, I kind of grew up with the entrepreneurial spirit and mindset, I guess I'd say. And, you know, growing up in the Motor City in Detroit, I was always a huge car guy. I was always enamored with trucks especially and uh, specifically, you know, the H1. So I actually graduated college with an economics degree, so not directly business. Right. Um, but, you know, ultimately, you know, it, was, it started out kind of as a passion project. And, you know, as you know, as well as I do, when you're passionate about something, sure. you know, you especially can- Especially in the car space. Especially yeah. in the car space, it's a lot easier to, you know, kind of trial and error and figure figure things out. And what was your back, your background? I actually studied economics as well. Okay. So, so no one economist, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and you? I have, a, I have a design degree. I have a firm. design degree, okay. Yep. Were you guys friends before this company started? Did, did you all grow up together? What's the story? Yeah, I mean, Adam and I met in college and funny enough, the first time we really actually hung out alone, uh, we took his Hummer off-roading. So and obviously, obviously experienced a few uh, breakdowns along the way and Fast forward two years, and we were discussing the, you know, the potential of, of this bringing this to market, and um, you know, obviously, two to three years down the road, here we are, you know, with our first few uh, production vehicles. So, how does it work? Did you lay out a business plan, or did you just restore Hummer, sell it, and go, hey, this could be a fun business, or? Was the idea to do this from the get-go, or did you just start with one? And how yeah, so we kind of started out. Um, small. It was actually around the time you could pick up uh, right when the military surplus Humvees were uh, getting sold on government auction. So uh, I was in college at the time and figured, hey, you know, this might actually be a good idea to, you know, maybe start this and start this following this dream that I've always had of kind of starting my own little micro industrial car company. Right. So right. I reached out to Ian and I'm like, hey, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to buy a couple of these trucks and put together our secret sauce. I kind of told him like the main thing is like powertrain, modern technology, but at the end of the day, keeping the iconic heritage of what sets these vehicles apart. And he immediately bought in. And uh, it was really at that point, then we entered the first two years of development of R&D, trying a bunch of things, breaking as much stuff as we could and, you know, beefing it up and, you know, 
ultimately kind of putting the ultimate package together. And once we did that, then we started production. Uh, this is, we started production roughly uh, well, year, 12 months ago. 12 yeah. months ago. Oh, okay. And, um, and ever since the start of production, we've been building the launch edition um, trucks that you see here on the civilian H1s. Well, it's interesting you choose the H1 because for a while these were the coolest thing out there. Then they went through, ah, the polluting giant <laughs> pig car, get that thing out. I yeah. mean, people just hated them yeah. for a while. And now we're kind of in the, did you do market research and say, let's see, we could do Broncos or we could do uh, Tahoes or we could do uh, Toyota Land Cruisers or Hummers. Oh, Hummers has the best, you know. So yeah, nothing has the same, like, I guess, road presence as well as that same iconic um, you know, face to it, right? right? And obviously, yeah, there's a lot of people that there's a there's a very negative stigma, you know, involved with the, the Hummer H1 specifically. Um, we really wanted to change that. And although, yeah, it does still it does does still carry that same look. All the stuff that's hidden underneath, you know, starting with the drivetrain specifically, you know, it's obviously at least doubled in terms of efficiency. Um, you can see 20 miles per gallon. You can run it on biodiesel. It's all those little things that. We were just really trying to change the perception of the Hummer and in the marketplace. Kind of expanding on that too is I was really upset when when you know uh, Hummer had stopped producing trucks and they essentially right. went out of business. And for a while, I kind of always thought that there was this gap, like no one, everyone's doing Jeeps and Broncos and Defenders and things like that, and they're doing them really well. I mean, there's a lot of very sure. awesome um, things going on in that world, but. I, you know, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I don't think anyone's really tried to capitalize on this in a turnkey way. I right. mean, there's guys that have beautiful restorations of Hummers, but they're not, you know, rethought of in a modern context. Like, if they were still making the truck today. So, yeah, so if somebody buys one of these from you, they're essentially getting a 90s truck. So they're not paying top price. You're not paying a sales tax based on a new car price. I mean, every state is different. Every state is different, yeah. So if I'm, I, this would be, oh, what's this, a 95? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, how does it work? Do you buy the truck and then put it up for sale? Or do I come to you and I go, I got this Humvee, it's all beat to crap? So it can go either way. Okay. So the truck behind me was a truck that we built for press purposes. Mm -hmm. So we actually sourced it ourselves and built it out. The truck behind you is a customer vehicle. Um, and there is a, uh, you know, a, a discount, obviously, that's involved. There's like a trade-in program we offer where they can bring in their truck. Um, and then eliminate that donor cost off of it. Okay. So the cost of the vehicle at the end of the day, when you know we sell a vehicle to a client, someone orders one, you know, they're, the price that they're paying is turnkey. Right. It's not like you know, it's this is how much a conversion costs, and then you got to source your own donor vehicle. Right. You can kind of bake the cake anyway, um, but we try to do it as wholesomely as possible. So it's kind of like buying a new car. Any tax breaks of being in Detroit and doing it there and that kind of thing, you know, because. It's fun to see Detroit coming back. I see all these little, where I used to see burned out buildings, I see little everything yeah. from making the, the, the watches yeah. to all kinds of things. And that's what, this is just a giant watch, really. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's the same, basically the same idea. And, you know, I say, why Detroit? Did you, did you want to do Detroit because of the economic condition there? Or? Well, honestly, like, I grew up in Dearborn, which is the home of Ford. Sure. And I spent majority of my childhood riding to the product development center and peeking over the walls trying to see the prototypes. And as that, and that like love and passion for cars grew, I started getting in, involved in the design community and, and the car restoration community. I started seeing these little niche groups of people that were highly skilled, but underappreciated. Right. And I feel like Detroit has gotten a bad rap in the last 15, 20 years. And ever since I grew up, especially in the early to mid 2000s, it was just the poster child of you know, the recession. Right, so right. we felt being car enthusiasts and, and growing up, you know, 15, 20 minutes outside of the city and going down there all the time. We, there's no other place that we could find not only the level of talent of people in the city, but also there's a great energy of revival, at, you know, for craftsmanship. Sure. So we really wanted to be a part of that in an automotive context. So there's really no other place that we could have imagined, uh, you know, building this business. No, I think that's great. And do people think you're crazy? Do you get that? Do you have a yeah. lot of that? Well, let's get Thank right you. into the vehicle now. We've learned a little bit how you put it together. Tell us what we have here. How bad was this when you got it? Are they, was it pretty much trashed out? You, yeah. you stripped the whole thing down so, anyway. Don't I you? mean, we ultimately, these are recycled trucks, which right. is kind of cool. We don't have to find the most pristine 
right. you know, picturesque trucks. We, we actually prefer to go f for the ones that, you know, need a little bit of extra love and TLC. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of dented body panels or oxidation, things like that. The nice thing is we only use just the shell and the frame from the original truck. So everything else is getting replaced anyways. So it, it affords us, you know, an awesome opportunity to increase and improve the quality of everything, even down to like the sheet metal work. Yeah. Um, we replaced a lot of the original sheet metal. And what were um, they originally, steel? No, they were actually originally aluminum. So okay. they had to be lightweight for right. uh, air, air lifting. Okay. So fiberglass hood and then aluminum body. Well, let's open it up and take a look. Can we sure. open the hood? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Now, what engine did this, these originally come with? So they came with anything from like a 5.7 gas motor all the way down to a uh, you know 6.5 turbo diesel. Okay. Um, and whose motor did they use originally? It was all GM based. All GM. Yeah, it was all GM based. And this is GM based as well, right? It yes. is correct. Okay. So the ultimate goal was to keep it as GM based as possible, just from a standpoint of serviceability. A lot of people, you know, buy relatively low volume, you know, start whether it's a startup company or just a low volume uh, company in general, that it's very hard to get parts for. So we were trying to use as many um, drivetrain wise, as many off the shelf components as possible, right. or at least engineering our products to fit in an, in an application so that you can take it to any GM service center um, around the world. It's a funny, it's almost mid-engine, isn't it? It is, it, it is, is so mid-engine. Technically yeah. it is mid-engine. The trucks yeah. have an awesome weight balance. Yeah. Um, it's almost a 50-50 weight balance. And it's very unique. So I mean, it's independent suspension, um, and it actually has portal uh, hubs. So the axle shafts go into a portal box at the hub, and then there's a gear reduction. Right. So it's just a really cool, unique design. This truck, as you can see, has got our air suspension on it. Axles and, and rear ends and all that stuff, those are all new too, or do you use? So we use the original housings. Right. It's an AMC Model 20 which is, that's you know the, the housing of the differential. We upgrade, so in the rear, we actually use an ARB uh, air locking differential. In the front, uh, it is the original design differential, so it's limited slip. That also, having that air locking diff in the rear allows us to run an air compressor. Okay. So all of our trucks have onboard air. Okay, well, very cool. And it's got all the amenities. I see it's got air conditioning and everything else. Oh, yeah. yeah. Full-blown uh, upgraded HVAC system. We actually have two units. We have a primary unit that feeds the entire you know, dashboard and the front occupants. And we have a secondary unit for the rear passengers. Who is your audience? Is it hunters? Is it rappers? Is it who? <laughs> I mean, it's like every conceivable kind of, you know, guys that are just, you know, you know, I see crazy guys in L.A. all the time. Got to have something like this. I mean, is it? Is it? going for work or, or the show vehicle, what, what do you find? I mean, most of our customers to this point, we've only made six trucks, right. have been blue collar business owners. Right. Um, so it's actually great. A lot of our customers use the vehicles for what they're you know, supposed to be used for. Uh, I know our first client in Michigan takes his hunting into the, you know, to the shooting range and, and off road all the time. Some of these I'm sure will be you know, garage queens in the future. Right. Um, but to this point, it's just been enthusiasts that want something a little bit different. Um, and understand you know, the brand and, and what we're trying to accomplish with this platform. So is it now lighter or heavier than the original truck? Believe it or not, it's uh, roughly 150 pounds lighter than really? the original. Okay. So okay. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what specifically we did to do that, to accomplish that. It kind of was just a byproduct of you know, all of the, the upgrades and the refinement. Right. But um, it's still got a you know, seven and a half thousand pound uh, <laughs> curb weight. And wow. um, yeah, seven and a half thousand pounds. Our standard drivetrain configuration will make 500 horsepower and roughly a thousand pound feet of torque. So, the best zero to 60 numbers we've gotten so far are in like the uh, low sixes, high fives. Really? So, they're actually pretty quick. Uh, that's pretty quick, yeah. Uh, and if you're buying vehicles by the pound, that's probably a good deal. What does one of these go for? So they start at 218.5, okay. and that is out the door, including right. donor and everything, okay. the donor vehicle. And again, you're buying a 20-year-old truck that's been exactly. totally upgraded. Yeah, right. And all new parts. And all new parts, okay. warranty. Uh, we offer our own warranty, bumper to bumper and powertrain. Yeah, because I see a lot of equivalent new vehicles, 150, 160, so it's really, it's not gonna last as long as this thing. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and let's open up a little bit. Power now, running Now, that was never on the... No, no, no. 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 Okay. They're really helpful, I mean, even, even for me. I've got long legs, but it, it does yeah. make it easier. 
I'm not entirely sure if you've had any experience in, in H1 with the, with the cab configuration. It's definitely pretty unique. Oh, it is unique. Very I... wide. It's not really an intimate driving experience when you're with, uh, if you're with a significant other, because you can barely reach over and touch them. Well, I guess dads would like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you're on a date and she's you know, halfway across the car. Exactly. Yeah. And I like the split windshield, not since... Uh, I think a 48 Buick have I seen this one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, and they're that's, heated too, the windshield's internally heated. Okay. Which is helpful. So. Uh, no, it's really fascinating. And this, this come off, or no, this is all? This is all stationary in terms okay. of the top. So it's, okay. um, so like this truck has a soft top on it. So right. technically the soft tops are removable. Hard tops are, you know, fixed. They have to I see, oh, and this opens up. So yeah, so it's like a hatchback almost. So you get a hatchback too. I mean, it's enormous. What is the wheelbase on this, do you know? Uh, I wanna say it is 130 inches. Okay, so still not as long as the Duesenberg. And Duesenberg, <laughs> yeah. 143 and a half and wow, 153 man. and a half for the long way, buddy. <laughs> so this would be a compact car if yep. we had one of those. And they have a surprisingly good turning radius too. Yeah. Um, Width-wise, obviously, uh, they're they're pretty wide so i think with the mirrors uh open like you know normal driving conditions i want to say it's 104 inches wide so eight and a half feet with them folded in uh it's a hair under eight feet wide and how many variations are there of the hummer i mean like you have this one kind of roadster thing it opens up exactly the top comes down this is back this is a full-on hard top all the exactly time. so are there only two or there more no i want to say there's close to five that we offer. So the, you're seeing two of them here. We right. offer a single cab, uh, two door configuration. So it's got an extended bed, um, really long pickup bed. And then we also offer a four door hard top pickup. So essentially it would be like if you took this hatchback part off and you just have a hard top pickup truck with you know no no cab. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's great the because I, I can't wait to read the comments, you know, because people are <laughs> polluting. Now what you're doing, you're taking a vehicle that somebody is going to drive anyway and making it more fuel efficient and less more emissions efficient as well so i mean that's all good it's not like it's already been manufactured exactly so you're just remanufacturing it. it's not yeah. like you're making a brand new giant polluting vehicle exactly. I mean, you're yep. just taking something old and making it cleaner than it was so exactly. I, I i think that's an interesting justification no, it, it, I, I think it's great. And the fact you guys are all in your 20s and you're doing this company, uh, the parents sitting, oh, they all worried. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. They're probably more worried about some of the off-roading adventures we find ourselves yeah. in yeah. inherently, whether it be because of journalists or um, just a, a weekend passion. So Yeah, mostly mostly supportive a little bit. At first, definitely was, you're going to do what with Hummer H1s? The Hummer's been out of business for you know 10 years. My parents were a little... Yeah. little concern. No, but. I think it's great, you know, because we live in a society now, somehow people think working a keyboard is a better job than working on Allison transmissions or something. And it's it's really six to one and a half, you know, I have so many friends that are now making really good money doing mechanical things because nobody wants to do it or yeah, has no yeah. interest in it. And I think this is great. And I, I imagine you've, have you got a lot of interest? Are you surprised that yeah. Is it more than you thought? Is it about what you thought? Is it less? I would say it's been more than, than we thought. I mean, it's definitely, a, it's a small market, right? I mean, no, not everyone's in the market to buy a truck that's this big and, and bulky, yeah. but it has kind of surprised us, and especially on a, on a global aspect. That, that's yeah. what's really surprised us, the interest from, you know, guys in the Middle East. A lot of ISIS calls. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I think we're still... No, but I mean, but it, the one thing always makes me laugh about America is I like it. I want to buy it right now. Well, it's going to take about six months. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody wants, you know, Americans, we like it. I, I want it right now. I want to yeah. give, give me today. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's just great. What are, what are features you want to show me here? What else have we got? Anything on this one that's different? Uh, it's slightly different interior. It's got a, um, a flashier uh, right. interior with the diamond stitching. No, oh, very nice. Um, I'll, I'll let Ian actually kind of talk about some of the des design philosophy that was pivotal when we were kind of reimagining and rethinking the layout of the interior? Yeah, I mean, the original truck was just a sea of vac form plastic. Right. I mean, that's the 90s for you. I mean, but the, on this scale, it was just overwhelming. And you can't, you couldn't really cover it up with, with nice materials or change a few things here and there because it just didn't really feel cohesive. So we started with a blank canvas approach and really rethought the layout. And everything content-wise on our trucks is completely new. So you've got Bluetooth audio, you've got GPS gauges, right. you've got all the fun 
amenities you would find in a normal car. Because as a designer, you're not changing the design of the vehicle, really. Just more, a lot of these kind of touches, is that? Yeah, just a lot of the stuff, like, you know, a lot of the textures, you're changing a lot right. of, the, like the powder coating, the, you know, the Kevlar finish, the interior is, is all made out of aluminum instead of plastic now. Right, right. So it's, it's, it's more, it makes you want to interact with the truck more, and you're not really taking the heritage or the original iconic design away, you're just enhancing it. So does he come to you guys, what do you think of these swatches? What do you think? Oh, yeah. I like that. No, I like the other one. No, let's go back. Let's just get it. Oh, yeah. A lot of he's, that. he's come up with some crazy stuff, yeah. which at first when you look at it, you're like, yeah, I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that works. And then it's just one of those things where at this point I just trust him. Like no, if you said to me, I'm going to get a Hummer, I'm going to make it Robin's Egg Blue. I would go, nah, Robin's Egg Blue doesn't work for me. But it does work. I mean, yeah. it, it, it looks pretty cool. Thank you. It looks pretty cool. Thank you. So I, I think that's interesting. Oh. And so this is a design choice also, isn't it, these? Exactly. Yeah, so we tried, to, we tried to really hone in on things that were already interesting about the trucks. So a lot of the, the lighting is all LED lighting and up, it's all upgraded. All of these panels are all you know, metal and they're powder coated. And this seems to have more of a sport wheel than that one. Yep. yep. Each truck has a theme. This right. truck is more outdoors, you know, sandbox oriented. Right. This truck would be more of like a urban assault in some... To, urban assault. Yeah. 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 yeah that takes <laughs> that's on the what Detroit people want to hear in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Urban assault. Because that's one thing Detroit does not have enough of. Yeah, we should, is yeah. urban assault. Yeah. Yeah. You're mainly yeah. battling the potholes at that point. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You yeah. know, this is perfect for L.A. actually. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a Daimler ferret tank over there. And for L.A. it's really the best way <laughs> yeah. to get around. Yeah. yeah. Plus you got the machine gun, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which it works wonders. And of course this top comes off. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's heavily cool. insulated as well. I, would, I want to say there's half an inch of, of foam padding on the underside of that. So you get a lot of sound as well as thermal. And you know, a big thing for me too, when we were kind of designing, like a major exterior point that we wanted to incorporate was using a coating that is scratch resistant and very like abrasion resistant. Right. So, I mean, as you can see, like on this mirror, there's little 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 scratches and whatnot from right. the, few, the, the few times that it was off-roaded. Right. Um, and, you know, it's plastic, obviously. So you can see that the plastic is what gets nicked, right. but the actual coating itself on the exterior, you know, is about as durable as it gets. Now, was there ever a standard shift Hummer or were they all automatic? The only standard shift Hummer, um, I believe, was the H3 platform. And these use the Allison, what, six-speed, double six overdrive? Six-speed, yeah, Allison 1000 six-speed with, with overdrive. And then we use a manual uh, transfer case, so it's selectable. You can do right. two high, four high, four low. Right. The original trucks were essentially always four-wheel drive. So, oh, okay. Um, and the big difference, too, from like the 06 Alpha, which had the Duramax Allison drivetrain in it, that one had a, a five-speed and this one has a six speed. So you do actually end up getting an extra couple miles per gallon on the okay. highway. Now what does mom say when you guys park this in the driveway when you go to visit? Or, <laughs> or maybe you still live at home, I don't know. But is it, do they kind of think it's like they're being urban assaulted or what's going on? <laughs> no, they, they love it. My, the first time I showed my grandma one of our trucks, she was, lo she was loving it. I was, I was actually kind of surprised and it was, that was kind of exciting to see. And uh, I mean, yeah, my, my parents, I have a little, uh, a little half brother and um he's two years old and he's like i want to i want to go for a ride in the monster truck so oh, whenever cool. i'm whenever i'm at the parents house you know get him on my lap and he starts it and and how old is your grandmother uh she is in her 70s I oh okay oh she's older than me okay fine <laughs> just want to make sure all right well cool can we go for a ride in this thing let's, and the yeah. nice thing is we can all fit in it can't we yep yeah and we can get 20 miles per gallon so let's yeah. uh, let's go save some fuel Take them both. Let's do it. Sweet. We spent a lot of time really trying to refine on-road 
you know, refinement and ride quality. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a Hummer, so, you know, it's gonna be able to off-road pretty much right. on anything you throw at it. Right. The big thing was, you know, improving, like, steering fuel, for instance. We spent a lot of time trying to refine the steering, making it tighter, right? You know, not, not feel like you're driving a big eight-foot-wide truck as much. I guess it is eight-feet-wide, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of interesting, too, driving a, a truck with um, the geared hubs that these Hummers have because you'll notice when you're slowing down or accelerating, you hear like a humming noise and it's actually the gears, yeah. uh, the straight cut gears in the, in the gearboxes. Is that so, where the name comes from? Yeah. Oh. You know. Whose gauge package is that? Uh, so we actually use Speed Hut, Speed Hut gauges, and they're all actually, they're GPS based. Right. Gauges, so you can uh, you can run like zero to sixty times. You get performance figures. Just don't go through a tunnel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, like in all, but just speedometer and not tack, not the others are. They, a lot of them are diesel related, so you got like boost, right. um, exhaust gas temperature, and is kind of an important thing to keep track of when you're driving a diesel truck, as well as your transmission temp. Um, a lot of time and effort was spent. Uh, with R&D in regards to improving the cooling capacity. Yeah. So, I mean, these trucks, you can run them. The really cool thing is, you know, you can run this thing at 80 miles an hour on the highway and it's cruising at like 2,000 RPM. So it's-, it's How many gallon tank is these? 25, so not not enormous. No, about the same as the Ford Galaxy or a yeah. big Imperial. And you can get about 300 miles out of a tank, so. Yeah, yeah. If you look really closely in the windshield, we have heated filament I that runs that, yeah. in, the, in the windshield, so that's very nice, like in the winter. Um, when you have a vertical windshield, there's a, you know, you have issues with like ice buildup and snow and stuff right. getting, getting mucked on there. Another big thing was, um, you know, finding the right tires. Tires are really important. Right. And, you know, it's overlooked. And for me, proportion is everything. And I think that. The original trucks had great wheel tire size proportion in terms of like, you know, in relation to the body. What do you have on here now, Michelin's? No, so the, we actually, on this truck, we run um, Nitto. I believe these are the uh, Terra Grapplers. So it's actually a hybrid all terrain and mud terrain. It's a hybrid, so it's not as aggressive as a mud terrain, right. but it's not, you know, as refined as an all terrain tire, which is nice because you get the size and you get the width and the, you know, the, the overall diameter, um, but it's not as loud. I definitely, I'd say I'd have, I've tried pretty much every type of off-road tire, you know, when we were de developing this truck, and I'd say by far this is my favorite one. Yeah. It's still perfectly aggressive, but they're not loud. Yeah, I mean, these tire, who makes it? Uh, they're made in America. Uh, Nitto, Nitto, I believe, makes these um, in the United States, which is actually pretty impressive. But they're big, they're 38 inches. 38 inches by 13 and a half inches wide, so. Big tire. A beefy tire. You can hear that humming from the, yeah. from the differential. It's kind of an interesting Hummer quirk. The other thing too, I don't I don't believe I mentioned, but um, our trucks all come biodiesel um, right. compatible. So you can run up to like B100, uh, as, it, you know, as it is, right. which is kind of cool it smells a lot better than normal diesel fuel. It smells like flowers or french fries. Right. Well, you start to look down on SUVs and stuff. Oh yeah. It is kind of interesting though. You know, I'm a big off-road 4x4 guy. Yeah. And honestly, for for this you know market and these types of vehicles, they're actually not as, like that much taller than, um, yeah. for the most part, I mean, it fits in a normal parking garage. I want to say they're, it's a hair above six and a half feet tall. You can pretty much get it in any standard yeah. height. Can you go up to your doors and water with this thing? Yeah, yeah, it's got the snorkel. Right, right. So in theory, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it because you get it, you know, right. You get it pretty dirty, but yeah, you could um, easily, you know, take it up, up to that level. It's funny too. They actually made everyone when they, you know, hear that they have snorkels, they're like, you know, I'll get questions like, oh, well, you know, is it water? Like, are the doors sealed? Like, is water gonna get it? And you actually don't want to prevent water from coming in the cab because then the truck has a tendency to want to float. Right. Then right. you lose traction. So, you know, when they were actually designing it, part of the original intention was to allow it to get the, the water in and give it some ballast and weight. And that way you can yeah. pour, you know, really deep. It's got some juice. Yeah, it runs nice 
Exactly. Thank you. Quiet. Were these built on a division of General Motors, or what was it? Totally separate company. So it's, it's really interesting. So General Motors owned the rights to Hummer, and you know the, the branding. Uh, it's, it's to my knowledge, I believe that's the way it was. They never actually built them in their own factory. Though. Yeah. So they were built by a company called Am General. And it's funny, they actually built the Humvees and the civilian trucks on the same line, and then they'd roll off, and the civilian ones would go one way to get the VIN number stamped on there, and then the military trucks would go you know, the other way. They built a lot of military ones. So yes. like, they only made 12,000 or so civilian trucks. I wanna say over the course of the 80s and 90s, when they started building these things, the, the Humvees at least, they made upwards of 100, 150,000 globally. So they weren't all for the United States. You know, they'd send them off to our allies like France or Germany right. um, for their militaries as well. You know, another big thing was obviously the, you know, it's, it's one thing to get rid of all the back corner of plastic and right. the cheaper benefits. It's another thing when you try to build a whole car interior and figure out how to not make anything rattle. No squeak, yeah. no squeaks, no rattles. So what was I mean, your biggest obstacle when building these things? I'd say the uh, the, the margin of error. It's, it seemed like when we were going through the, like when we go through the bodies, they're all just a little different. So right. the tolerances are always different. Right. Like for instance, I can't, you know, tool up in a sense to build like a bunch of dashboards and things because if we thought we got it precisely right, we'd install it on one truck and it would fit. And then on, the, on yeah. a complete different truck, it wouldn't work. So it's kind of riding this fine line of balance of hand fitting everything and then kind of dis disassembling yeah. it and then, you know, reassembling it in the end. It is pretty cool though, like the, the kinds of looks you get from people. Maybe 25% of the time you get someone that gives you the stick eye. Right, right. But like a lot of the times people are just throwing thumbs up and like, yeah. you know, they're, they're all about it. And I will say this, like, it is funny, like California, is so like you have some of the most hardcore four x four truck enthusiasts. I know, but you also have some of the others. But exactly. Then you get the opposite side of the spectrum. You get the green, you know, electri electrified zero emissions, which is it's great. I mean, right. it, it is pretty cool to see that. So I mean, I have to ask in terms of what you remembered and what what you've experienced so far. Like, how has this differed or? Well, it's a unique driving experience. It's, yeah, it, it is. It, you know, that's, what's, that's what the website is all about. I remember driving one of these and realizing it does, it sounds similar to say it shrinks around you, but I don't feel intimidated driving it. I don't feel as if I'm crushing things on both sides of the road without realizing yeah. it. No, it's actually, that's good. it's very nice. I'm sure it's better than stock. It's been a long time since yeah. I drove one, so certainly got more power than stock, I think. Oh, yeah. So how do we come up with the name Mill Spec? Military Spec? Military Spec, yeah. 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 Pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's one of the hardest parts about you know, starting a, a company, something I was so passionate about. It's like, I got to get the name right. Well, I think it's great. I mean, I realize I'm older than all three of you guys put together. <laughs> and I'm uh, about that age. And it's great to see young guys like yourself starting a company. And starting a company that's not just designing websites, you know? Thank you. I mean, I like people that make something who then a product goes out into the world and somebody has to make tires and somebody has to make transmissions exactly. and somebody, have a, and you know, and it keeps the whole workforce going, you know, this Thank idea you. of just doing something virtually, I, I, I like having things in reality and, and it's, yeah. it's really inspiring to see because it's mostly retired guys in the 50s and 60s start doing this stuff, exactly. you know? Exactly. The fact you guys, you got the energy and you got the stamina and you got Thank the optimism you. and you're starting a, a business and starting a business now is just unbelievable. I can't imagine yeah. the rules and regulations, environmental stuff and everything oh, yeah. else. So congratulations, Adam and Chris. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having us. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, well, it's an honor. It's a, pr it's, it's a pleasure. And I, it's fun showing young people doing car stuff, you know. It's, Thank you. Thank you. It really means a Yeah, lot. it's really great. It's really exciting. Hopefully, uh, maybe we'll have a few more opportunities in the future, some other cool stuff that, you know. Yeah, you got any, any of the cool products, let us know. Come on back again. You're more oh, welcome. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys next week. Start a business and stop watching Netflix. <laughs>